All right, so we have some um, new uh, developments in Real to Real Outdoors and uh, the Moonlighter and the Jupiter. And uh, yeah, so we have some exciting news. Um, we're bringing the Moonlighter, which is a, a charter boat that's been running in Grand Haven for oh, a long time, a while. 20 years. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so and that boat is coming to Lonington and that will be the new Real to Real Outdoors boat. Um, maintaining the Moonlighter name, of course, but um, we'll be running, offering trips on that boat full time uh, during the summer this year. So if you are interested in a trip right off the bat, uh, drop me an email uh, and I will be happy to get you on the calendar for that. Um, Jeremy and I also are combining our um, tournament teams and we'll be fishing, of course, on the Jupiter. Um, you know, I do like my 31 Tierras, but the Jupiter has some comfort uh, measures that are slightly better than... We could try to six slip dudes on the 33. It would be, a, I mean, <laughs> it'd be interesting <laughs> to say the least. But with that being said, uh, making a huge commitment to the boat and basically redoing all the electronics, uh, the stereo system, and uh, all the rigging is going to be new. Uh, lots of great, cool products that we believe in will be on the boat, and we want you to, to come enjoy them. Also, we'll be doing some live streaming from the boat, so uh, keep your keep your eyes peeled for that. Should be starting very soon. We hopefully will be live streaming from both boats and uh, doing a multi-camera live stream uh, featuring Panoptics and. Uh, it should be a, a really awesome way to begin your morning while we're a few hours into ours. So we're very excited about offering that product that will be on YouTube. So uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed on YouTube so you get reminders when we go live. And I think it's going to be fun. I'm excited about it. I think it's going to be a very cool uh, learning curve. But yeah. I think it will be a lot of fun. So I think we're going in a direction that hasn't been... Hasn't been done. No. So yeah. I think this is going to be new. Um, you know, I think it's going to be exciting. You guys will be able to log in in the morning and see what's going on on the lake. So, yeah. you know, if you're uh, getting ready for work or you're driving into the office, you can throw it on in the background and, you know, hear us. Spend your morning with us. Pancaking some fish. Yeah. Throwing baits on the floor. Right. You know, things that we do. But with that being said, uh, Garmin has uh, really stepped up their game. Yeah, so you know, when we, when we came up with this idea to do this, this daily live stream, uh, we reached out to Garmin, and you know, I've been a big Garmin guy for a long time, and I, you know, I've, I've purchased a lot of Garmin, and I've, I've worked with Garmin on a lot of products, and so we, we presented this idea to them and said, hey, we really want to do this with Garmin. And we've, you know, Garmin has been great to us. Uh, we think this is the best, you know, best electronics you can get, yeah. And we wanted them to come on board, and they said absolutely. So, uh, yeah, they came on board in a big way. Big way. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe uh, uh, maybe we'll just do one of these. And uh, so the boat's getting wrapped, and you can't miss it. No, I don't think there won't be any question what type of electronics are on. Won't boat. be a question. That's for <laughs> sure. But thank you, thank you, thank you, Garmin. Keep making great products. Um, Panoptics has been awesome for us. Uh, we hope to do a lot more videos and a lot more information with Panoptics um, and really explaining how we use it on a, day, on a daily basis. So I, I think we're going to have uh, a new surprise, a new, some changes are coming and uh, you know, we'll, we hope to be the ones to show you guys, to, to yeah. show you the debut. I don't want to talk too much about it. I want to let secret. it build up a little bit, but you'll see it. <laughs> I'm excited about this as well. So, um, Without uh, any, I mean, we're doing an unboxing, so we might as well open yeah. some Garmin stuff. So we uh, we decided to go big. Uh, we yeah. we went all out, and uh, not only did we did we refit the the Tierra, but we we did it right. Yeah. So, so we want to show you guys what we decided it. on. You gotta have the brains of the operation, right? <laughs> oh. So, what do we got here? Ooh. So the 8612 is an awesome unit. Yes. Um, we wanted to do uh, 8616s 
but they didn't fit. They don't fit in the dash, unfortunately, unfortunately on the 33. So we could have went with 116 or, or 212s, and we're both a huge fan of, of working with two side-by-side multifunction display units and the 8600 series from Garmin is the top of the line this has all the features so this allows us to do everything we want with uh, transducers has a lot of options for NEMA and plug-and-play ports video output yes video output which was huge live stream which is awesome yeah I'm excited about that so and it gives you dual frequency chirp and that's the, the biggest advantage is the capability of uh, dual frequency chirp in this unit so yeah we uh, we went we went big with two uh, 8612s, but we didn't stop there. No, 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 no. Why would you stop there? Let's see what we got here. So, if you're in the back of the boat, since you didn't get, since you don't have a 16 in the dash, they're kind of hard to see from right. the back, you know, the 12. Right. No. <laughs> this is the only place that we really went small. Right. But the uh, this is the GPS map the 943 awesome unit i actually use these for ice fishing if you're if you're looking for an awesome all-in-one unit great gps great maps uh chirp technology as well in those um great great unit and the perfect thing to pair your ps30 with for for your live scope absolutely or for your uh pan optics so this will be mounted right in the back next to the shoot rigger Center down rear. Yeah, it's in between the out and downs. Right. Casey. <laughs> <laughs> so we're excited about these. So the 943 was intentional. Uh, you know, we had the opportunity to actually go bigger than 943, but one thing that you guys should keep in mind, if you want to mount a, a multifunction display unit in the back of the boat, sometimes bigger is not better. Yes. For the first time in my life, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so there may or may, I may or may not have been involved in someone breaking a 12 inch display in the back of a boat. I have before. seen also a 12 inch, it was not a Garmin unit. Uh, this one wasn't either. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you, know, you know what's weird? They float. <laughs> they float well, you would think they sink but they don't they float yeah i had a buddy run right to the back to get a rod and got the belly was out in front of him and wow away she went right overboard and yeah they float we were able to net it i don't know that it ever worked again but all right so we didn't stop there i think like we just keep saying this over and over it's like the theme of the day so um the moonlighter had a slightly aged sound system i think it had a 1989 it was very no that's not true it had it, been upgraded it was, once it was in its life yeah but it uh it, it had was, a cd player it did have a cd which player. was cool we didn't have any cds so we couldn't test no, it one there was one there's one stuck in stuck it. in there it's a kid rock cd oh that's right yeah we did play it yeah, yeah it still sounds good but garmin has an awesome line of products that i'm actually a huge fan of uh and that would be the fusion line so yeah all new, possibly. All new six and a halfs. They also have this thing, I like to call it the black box, but they call it the white box. It is a white box. It is a white box. It comes in a black box. It does come in a black box, but it is a white box. So this is a, a basically a faceless head unit. Um, you can control every option right in your Garmin. For, it, it's a really, it's very intuitive. It's very easy. You can go through, um, you know, any of your XM features or whatever you want to do. You can do it all right there. So they just make basically the brain and you hide the brain anywhere you want and control it with any of the garments. So you even be able to uh, control it with the back unit, which is very cool. But since those speakers are kind of little, we figured, Ooh, that was loud. We figured, you know, you gotta have at least one sub. Yeah. So, the boat's gonna thump. At least a little bit. At least a little. Oh, there it is. is. And you gotta power it. Gotta get power. Gotta have big power. So, we didn't we intentionally did not put the loudest stereo system on the lake on the boat because yeah. it's a charter boat and it doesn't need to be that loud. 
You but it'll wanna, be plenty. You don't want to draw a lot of attention to right, yourself. Right, right, right. We don't want people to know where we are just based on yeah. what music we're like playing. Like Crispy. Right. You know. Yeah. I mean. Hey, I think Crispy's in Michigan City. I can hear him I from can hear Grand Haven. Right now. But he's yeah. also putting ice bags on his amplifiers to keep them cool enough <laughs> but, to make it that loud. You know, they, they have liquid cooling for things. There you go. It's kind of, I mean, it's not quite liquid, but. Yeah. Just go to Westco and get yourself a bag of ice. A couple hours it will be. <laughs> so anyways, um, the, the Fusion line of stuff, I really enjoy it. I enjoy yeah. installing it. Um, it's easy to work with. The head units, if you do go with the Apollo head unit or with the white box, you have different zones. Everything's controllable. Everything's EQable. You can EQ in different zones. Um, you can really make it sound really nice. And if your buddy has it, you can yeah. party bus to Party them, bus it, yeah. And you guys can actually have the same music playing on both boats at the same time. It'll sync up, it works well. That's a nice feature. Yeah, the Sunday sandbar thing. Yeah. Very cool with the with the fusion. Yeah. All right, so to make this stuff work correctly, there's a couple products that uh, you definitely need to have. This is um, the weather and satellite radio controller. GXM54, right? Yeah. GXM54 for satellite weather and satellite music for Sirius XM. And the the weather is actually, if you have the weather capability, it's quite amazing. Yeah. It'll actually send you warnings um, if there's thunderstorm coming your direction or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, for safety reasons, it's a very good product. I've always been impressed with it. Yeah, so. lightning strikes, marine warnings, hail. Um, there may be some more exciting features coming too, from what I'm hearing. So uh, I'm pretty excited about what's what's happening with the satellite weather and and uh, uh, condition information that we get. Plus, you get the Sirius XM, so which is cool. Yeah, Especially you know, for customers. If you're out off your offshore, you don't get good FM reception. You don't have you know good cell reception out there. You don't have any um, you know uh, cassettes. You don't have a CD stuck in the Cassette CD tapes. player. Um, <laughs> So, yeah. I feel bad for like kids that have never experienced, yeah. you know, Don't know what it is, tapes. nor CDs. Like, if you want a song, they can just say, Siri, play. Yeah. Yeah, and it does. And it goes off Amazing. on, like, four devices in your house. So, back to the fish finding side of things. Um, I don't think any boat should not have one of these. Yeah. And this is the PS30. It's uh, the Panoptics transducer. Game changer. If you have Garmin products, this is this will be one of the biggest changes that you can make to your fishing yeah, I think we've talked about it over and over uh, it changes the way that we fish you know the how many years cumulative between us I mean I'm 30 some and yeah, I'm over 20 so 50 so. years of Great Lakes experience and both of us in the last two and a half years have said that changes how we look at things that changes how we fish that changes what we thought for 30 years it changes how you read the water absolutely it's just no like, question it's a whole flood of more information um, I could talk about it forever. Yeah, and I'm sure we'll be talking about it throughout yeah, the summer. Absolutely. I mean, there should be a whole bunch more videos coming because we're going to have the ability with this all this new equipment, we'll be able to push it into a, a device to stream it live to you. So you'll be able to see what's going on in the MFD and what's going on on the back of the boat. We yeah. can explain it. We can tweak it. We can show people how we adjust it. I was, Let me ask you a question. Uh, how are you going to mount that thing? Uh, I like to mount it the way it's supposed to be mounted. That's right. Me too. <laughs> I don't, there's so many I mean people like to argue on the internet yeah it's fun yeah but, but I, I I enjoy the traditional mount yeah it's I gonna go on the boat in standard for for anyone who's got that question it's stand, it'll be a standard yeah. mount and we'll be able to show you what a standard mount looks like soon all right, all right. so um, where are we going next I don't know it's a surprise it's a mystery oh I think I like this is so we can start adding more fun toys. Okay, so what do we got here? Oh, this is the network port expander. Port expander, which is really cool, and it gives you a really clean install. Yeah. Um, you can daisy chain um, Garmin head units together, and they'll communicate that way. Um, this allows you to kind of bring everything into one central net network and it acts as basically like a, a switch or a router in your house. Yeah, and this and is giving you the opportunity to toggle it. between all your screens, everything's talking to everything. Uh, we have a couple of these on the Jupiter as well, but uh, was it GMS 10? 
Yeah. Yeah. GMS awesome 10. Units. So uh, we're, we're listing everything so that if anyone has any you know questions on an install or questions and what they would, would like, this is what we're using. Cool. What is cool. All right. Next. All right. So I've fished Garmin all of last year. Um, and I fished Garmin with Jeremy on the Jupiter last year as well. And the Jupiter marks fish with traditional sonar like no other boat that I've ever been on. And we're setting up the Moonlighter exactly the same way. Mm -hmm. And uh, the monster over there, maybe we should get the monster out first. So um, transducers, you know, you get what you pay for. Um, they're expensive, but this transducer is basically the best one you can get for uh, the Garmin units. And it is uh, a very small unit. It's unbelievable. The flaring block for this thing is the size of a, of, of a football. And obviously this gets cut um, oof, right on the table. But that's the flaring block that holds this transducer. But it's unbelievable. I don't know if it's going to slow the boat down or speed it up. I'd imagine it'll go faster. It probably looks like it might go faster. With Especially that with that, the sub <laughs> pushing air. But yeah, we're excited uh, again. And this is the Airmar. Uh, I can't remember the This number. is B275LHW. So B275LHW. Yep. Awesome transducer. So it's a it's a big one. It's a it's a powerful transducer, and because we went with the big transducer, we decided to do one more little thing with that. Yeah, and that is in here, and this is this is the uh, GSD twenty six uh, digital sounder. Basically, to get all of the punch out of this um, Airmar transducer, you need this. And this is like the black box uh, uh, for that transducer. Yeah, it's a sounder black box. So just getting the power to it um, to make sure that we're getting the, you know, the information that we want. Yep, absolutely. So, yeah. uh, that's safety. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Well, two, two things for safety. I definitely feel like the weather module is a great safety measure. Um, it, the head units, the charts are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. uh, that's awesome safety as well. But Jeremy always talks about this. Yeah. And I 100% believe the same thing. So yeah. we have, if I can get it out of here. This is the new uh, available in black now, which yeah. is very cool. So it's this, an appropriate name for the uh, the color of the radar. This is the Phantom. So the Phantom radar in black. So it's gonna look sweet. That's gonna look very cool. I'm really happy we Plus went with the, the black antenna. It really is a phenomenal radar. Yeah, um, it's it's very impressive. So use. on the charter boat, you know, we obviously don't want an open array. You got people putting rods up in the air. And so a dome radar that will give you the kind of target separation and detail that this thing will give you. It is a very, very impressive unit. And we are super excited to be running that. Yes. I ran this one, this unit last year in the white version. Um, didn't see any difference in the, but I probably would have got black if they had black yeah. then. But anyways, um, great unit. Very easy to use. Yeah. Um, very easy to tune. Yeah. So it, it really does work well. Right. And I just want to remind you that on the bottom of this, they have an arrow that points to front. It's probably not a bad idea to put it, point it the right direction. So one time, one time I may have installed a radar backwards on a boat, which is really weird to drive with. <laughs> I would imagine. I would imagine that'd be all sorts of confusing. But Garmin has their plugins on the front of the unit. Yeah. And almost everybody else's is on the back. So, you know, just look for the arrow. Yeah. Mark Williams will uh, testify to that one. <laughs> you know, one thing I want to say about Garmin before I put this away is the biggest reason for me, besides the fact that the, the product that you get at the end of the day is awesome, 
is the user interface across the board with all these products is very, very easy to use, very self-explanatory. The menus make sense. Mm -hmm. It's not glitchy. It just works and it works right out of the box. Yeah. Like you don't have to be an engineer to figure out how to run this. Thing. You literally plug this stuff together and turn, and it, turn on. it on and it works. And it works. And it does what you want it to do. I mean, yeah. can you tweak it and refine it a little bit? Sure. But you don't have to. Like you don't, people ask me that all the time. They're like, what do you, how do you tweak your sonar? I'm like, I don't. I just run it and, you know, I might make little changes on the day based, based on the water conditions. How, sure. you know, I might tune things just a little to get a better image. But all you're doing is changing what's in the screen. The sonar information is always the same. It's yeah. always there. And, and the same thing with the radar. I think the radar works just brilliantly right out of the, right out of the box. So uh, check them out. I think that's a, a really great product and, and it definitely keeps you safe. All right. And last but not least, the one thing that you almost have to have on a charter boat, <laughs> for sure, but yeah. uh, really handy, great tool. It will actually improve your relationship with the people that fish with you. I actually, I actually think that every charter captain should get the opportunity to go fish a charter without one of these. <laughs> I don't even know if I would do it. Like I might just take the day off. Cause I fished a couple seasons that way in the very beginning. Yeah. Uh, I just didn't, I couldn't afford, you know, the bells and whistles and we just, I couldn't afford an autopilot. My problem is my ADHD. It's you know, so tough. Like so tough. So before you uh, <laughs> yell at the guy driving, you should, you should take the helm and, and give us a shot. But I, I actually think that the autopilot is probably one of, if not the most important tools on the boat as far as catching fish goes. And you know, the thing too, with autopilot, you are spending more time on a good troll. That's, that's what I mean. Once you dial it in. And, and I'm like a huge, you know, the new autopilots are not really like the old autopilots with the plus one, plus five, uh, minus one, minus five. But if you start turning your boat a degree at a time, it, you, it'll, you're going to learn so much. Yeah. I mean, it, you're going to catch more fish. Your your bite rate's going to go up. Um, getting that boat dialed right in. And and these units are getting smarter and smarter and smarter. And everything's more integrated now. So everything's talking. So your autopilot, yeah. your radar, your chart plotter, all these things are working together. You can you can touch a spot on the screen and hit go to, and the autopilot says engage autopilot question mark yes go the boat will go there. I mean yeah. it's it's just gotten so so much easier, and I think again it comes down to safety. One note on safety I would say guys is. Make sure the other people on the boat know how to run the boat and use the equipment. You know, we don't talk about that enough, but you know, that's a huge problem, right? If you run in the autopilot and you have a gripper and keel over on the floor and the guy next to you doesn't know how to engage or disengage your autopilot, that can be a problem. So make sure the people that you fish with know how to run the equipment. Make sure somebody else can put it in the slip. Make sure somebody knows yeah. how to function that, you know, run that boat. Make sure somebody knows how to use the radio as well. Yeah. Uh, the VHF radio, not just the fusion. Yeah. But um, serious XM, yeah. In case of emergency, <laughs> in case of emergency. <laughs> uh, you know the radio is, is definitely a tool that everybody should have. Charter boats are required to have safety checklists. Um, there are some available. I should find one and maybe I'll share Put it, it up somewhere. On the page. Yeah. Um, but uh, all the charter boats have them, and it's like in case of an emergency protocol of what should happen. All boats should have that. Yeah, you really should. Yeah, and you know make sure your life jackets are in a somewhere where you can get one because when you need a life jacket. Yeah, you if they're down in the cabin under the stuff, under so. the table, you ain't gonna get to it. So, but anyways, autopilot reactor forty. Uh, so I have probably helped a dozen people purchase this autopilot, and literally every single person that I know that has a reactor forty has thanked me afterwards. It's just a great autopilot. It holds it. It holds in the wind. It holds when it's rough. It's easy. It's it's an all around very solid autopilot and uh also the bow mounts i mean you know obviously a 33 you only need like a 120 inch uh shaft on your bow mount trolling motor right. but the bow mount trolling motors are a game changer especially for small yeah. boats when you start steering the boat and propelling the boat with the bow you don't lose the bow to the wind you yeah. know the the wind is um being counteracted somewhat by that trolling motor so awesome products yeah Herman, thank you yeah 
you know what we gotta do? We gotta test the product. Well, we know the product works. So you know what I like to do with products that work? I don't know about this. I think it's gonna be good. <laughs> oh. It did have a nice ring to it when it hit the I'm deck. I'm just kidding, I pulled it out. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys All right, soon. guys, thanks again. Thanks, Garmin. <laughs>